Hello, good morning everybody. I'm Dr. Yap. I'm from the Medical Faculty and Health Sciences UC Malaysia Sabah. I'm going to demonstrate for you the steps on how to prepare yourself and the patient for blood taking process. Okay, so ideally before you take the patient's blood, you must prepare yourself first. Ideally, you should be gowned up with a gown, okay, with the apron, possible apron, and of course you must wear a mask. Okay. Secondly, you must have yourself prepared with a pair of gloves, right? So you must wear a pair of gloves to prevent spillage of blood onto yourself. It might be a disposable glove for a blood taking, a simple blood taking which is not involving the blood culture and sensitivity. Okay. So of course, importantly, you have to remove all your jewellery and your watches on your side. Make sure that you are clean and make sure you are ready. And then you must prepare yourself with all the uh, things that's needed for blood taking. Example, suitable size of syringe depends on how much volume of blood that you want to take. Second is the needle, of course, with appropriate size and also the volume of blood you want to take. For instance, if you take you need a bigger amount of volume of blood, you need a big size of syringe, which is around 16 to 18 gauge. But if for adult, a uh, normal size adult will be around 20 to 24, will be just good, right? Next, you need an alcohol swab to sterilize the area. Next, the tonicking and the um, cotton, okay, to prevent the blood from oozing out after you take the patient's blood. Okay, and most importantly, you must make sure that the process of blood taking, you have the blue sheet to make sure that the blood is not contaminating the area that you are taking the blood. Okay, so these are the first few steps that we have to undertake to ensure that the process is clean, the patient is safe, and yourself as a blood taker is clean and safe to be protected as well. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to take a blood sample from a patient. Before we take a blood sample, make sure that consent and explanation to the patient is being conducted telling him that we are going to take a blood sample on the patient first. Second, make sure that the patient is comfortable and lying down on the sheet, okay, the blue sheet which is lined up below the uh, patient's arm. And then we must ensure that the patient is comfortable and he is not using the dominant arm for blood taking. That is the most important. Secondly, we must see which of the pain which is most dilated and most easy to take. Usually, they are superficial, they are big, they are dilated, and are most importantly in the median antitubital fossa area. So, usually, you can take the cephalic or the basilic veins on the anterior forearm. Once you have identified, you must tell the patient that we are going to take the patient's sample on blood, and then you apply the tonic on it. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to put the tonic on you. Make sure that it is not too tight and will cause uncomfortable to the patient. It's comfort to the patient. Upon applying the venous tonic uh, you will see the vein will be dilated and will be superficial and you have to see whether is it rubbery. So once the vein is rubbery and is dilated, it is a very good vein sample. Next, after we have identified the vein that we want to take, make sure that the syringe and the Needle of appropriate size is being taken. Alright, for him, I'm going to take about 2 to 3 mils of blood. So I'm going to use a smaller syringe and a smaller needle pipe. And I will have to make an alcohol swap around the area that I want to do. You have to see that alcohol, when you put it up, is only on a circular motion. Make sure it's from internal to the external side and it is clean. Alright. Okay, we do not do like this because if we do in a haphazard way, the area will be contaminated. Okay, all right, sir, I'm going to take a blood from you. You'll be a bit discomfort. Okay. Okay. Blood is dehydrated. Just take about two to three meals that you want. Once it's been completed, then we 
we compress it we remove the syringe up and we okay, can open up the arm right and press on it thank you very much sir compress on it all right and it is done the blood has been aspirated from the patient okay appropriate amount you can insert it into it with this uh, needle on top and you have to poke into the cap once you have poked into it it will be negative pressure and the blood will be sucked into the plain tube in this case i'm sending this patient's blood for biochemistry and about two to three meals is just appropriate size and volume after that you have to remove this and put into the sharp bin and it's done once the patient's blood has been obtained, the next step is to filling up the patient's laboratory blood investigation form, labeling, and also to send the patient's blood to the lab. So the next is that once the patient's blood has been obtained, we have to counter check with the patient's case note and we label it onto the blood that has been taken. So we precisely check the patient's blood, the name, Okay, and the particulars before we take it and label it onto the patient precisely. And with the cold box in it, make sure the blood is in part two. Okay. After that, you have to fill up the patient's bio data into the blood request form. All right, so you have to make sure that all are precise and the date is accurate. With the necessary diagnosis of the patient. Okay, so in this patient it's just for the normal routine follow up. and the IC number with the necessary matriculation number. Most importantly, you must check what other investigation that you want to do for him. Before you finish, check everything is correct, the data with the case note, and then you sign your name, the date, and then after that, you put your chop or your signature with the uh, numbers of name and numbers of yourself down there in the blood request form. With this, it will complete the complete blood investigation, blood taking process, and you will have to submit this to the laboratory.